Good day, everyone. I am Travis Giffen. I am the Assistant Director of Online Programs. Thank you all for joining us uh, this evening to learn about the new alum and student journal uh, for learning design and leadership. Uh, we have the two co-editors uh, from the journal uh, with us here this evening to share uh, a bit about it. Um, while everybody is getting started, um, I have a few quick questions uh, to ask via Zoom poll, um, just so that we can get an idea of who's uh, here with us tonight and that can help us with conversation as things go on. Um, after we get through some of these, I'm gonna introduce the two co-editors of the journal. Uh, they will have a presentation for everyone this evening, uh, and then we will go to Q&A, um, where everybody will have a chance to uh, ask some questions uh, and get those answered. And then if time allows, um, we could maybe split off into some breakout rooms or just open up for uh, general networking um, at the end of the session. And then I will wrap things up uh, and we will be done um, before 6 p.m. Uh, Central Time uh, for everybody. So thank you all for coming uh, this evening. Um, thank you for everybody who answered the question that we had here. I have. I'm going to end this question here in another second. Thank you for that input, everyone. Looks like we mostly have current students with us here tonight. Uh, so if you are a current student, um, just are interested in what concentration um, you're from. Um, so if you can let us know a little bit about that, that would be great. Um, while that is going on, um, Again, thank you all for joining us here this evening. Uh, the share a little bit about things. The Journal of Learning Design and Leadership is a brand new student and alum journal, um, which provides a new opportunity for current students and alums to connect with each other, share intellectual idea, ideas, and submit research to the journal and feedback for our peers and gain insight into the publishing process in a low stakes but in professional environment. Uh, Join me also uh, in briefly congratulating them as they had their they put out their first issue last night uh, or today. Um, again, I am Travis Giffen, the Assistant Director of Online Programs. Also in the chat uh, is our online student advisor, Brianna Davis. Uh, she can help uh, answer questions if you have them in the chat. Um, and then I also see that we have Dr. Cope in the chat um, and uh, Kara Francis uh, with LBL in the chat, and then the director of online programs, uh, Sangeetha, is also in the chat. So it's good to see you all. Uh, thank you for attending. Um, with that, I've taken up enough time. Uh, let me briefly introduce uh, the two co-editors and then turn things over to them uh, so they can share about the journal itself and how you can submit uh, articles for the journal if you're interested in peer feedback and getting firsthand experience with the process. Um, so the two co-editors we have with us tonight are Dr. Natalia Barley, uh, who's a graduate from the EDD program in learning design and leadership uh, concentration from 2020, and Aurora Barget. Uh, she's a current student in the LDL concentration for the EDD. Uh, both have experience with research and presenting researched throughout their careers, and I'm excited for them to be able to share uh, the new journal um, with you all this evening. So I will turn things over to both of them now. Thank you very much, Travis, for the introduction and welcome everybody to be with us today and uh, hearing about the Journal of Learning Design and Leadership. So now the screen that you see should be the page of the Journal of Learning Design and Leadership. And we will provide you with the reference to, uh, to this website as well. But we're going to share this one, and we're going to go over a couple of details regarding the journal as well. All right. So first of all, the idea of this journal uh, appeared about two to three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, uh, by a few graduate students of the LDL program. And among them was uh, Kara that is with us uh, today as well. And after a, a lot of reflection, then this idea really started to grow. And for the past six to nine months, 
uh, a lot of uh, various graduates, alumni, and current students of the LDL programs have been working together to go and get that uh, journal up and ready. And as Travis mentioned, we are very proud to say that today our very first issue got published. So we are very excited about that and we're going to go uh, into details uh, for that. Okay, so. Can you guys still see the screen properly? Yeah, okay. Yep. I, I just have the poll that ended that is still on my screen. So right in the middle. So let me try to get that out of the way really quickly. If I can. Oh, did you stop the poll already, Travis? Yeah, okay. Yes, yep, it shall be stopped. Um, you might wanna try resharing your screen though. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I just pause it because that thing is just in the middle of the way. So let me just uh, stop sharing and resharing. Okay, let me just get that out of the way. Okay, so, sorry about that guys. Let's get back to where we were <laughs> on that screen and right there, there we go. So the Journal of Learning, Design and Leadership is obviously a peer-reviewed journal. It is open access so everybody can uh, see all the articles that have been published. And of course, the main thing was that we really wanted to promote the idea of multimodality as we've been doing uh, during our LDL courses with Dr. Cope and Dr. Kalinsky. So really the idea to have a multimodal publication there. Um, the journal also works with preprint articles, and we're going to dig into what that means in just a little bit. And uh, we are aiming at publishing three to four issues per year, per academic year. That's the goal so far. And the articles will be, of course, available through CG Scholar and Ideas, which is related to the library. Most of the articles that you will see in our first issue would be literature reviews, but it's not just that. We have a wide variety of articles that we will accept and that we will consider. The idea here is really to engage more of a discussion uh, around education, around education innovations, but also issues or challenges. And it can be related to formal or informal educational environment. So what we mean by that is that it can relate to K-12, higher education, could be in an organization, in an institution maybe, or even in a private company or in the community if that happens, right? So that really uh, gave the floor to a wide array of fields that can be covered here. And the idea is not only to discuss learning design, but also to discuss uh, learners and everything about you know, learners for any kind of fields. And of course, any kind of interdisciplinary topics that could be related to education, learning design, globalization, uh, all of that. So that's the main idea here. I hope that is clear for you, but don't you worry, we're going to dig into a little bit more of an overview right here, and I will leave the floor to Natalia to discuss that right there in the overview. Thank you so much. Um, so yes, I'm going to thank you for that introduction, Aurora, and I will talk about some, some give you some more detail about the journal. So um, I already mentioned that we primarily focus on um, preprint uh, literature reviews. However, that is not the only type of work that we will consider. So we also are looking for uh, preprints of original uh, case studies and educational technology evaluations that are supported by empirical uh, data. And uh, as um, Aurora will show you when she, she will show you the first uh, issue uh, in a couple of minutes, as you will see right now, we have two types of works um, that we accepted for the, our first publication. Um, they are foundational and advanced scholarly works. And I'll explain what the difference is between the two. Um, so first of all, the difference is in the number of um, words, this, the length of the article. So two to 4,000 words would 
would be for foundational um, scholarly works and advanced uh, ones are usually five to eight thousand words but of course word you know the paper length is not the only difference so uh, foundational works uh, we would expect uh, would focus on as the name suggests, uh, a foundation of some educational concept or innovation or issue. So um, it will just be a brief overview, essentially. Advanced scholarly works, on the other hand, uh, would elaborate more deeply on a specific concept, right, that, that the author chooses to uh, discuss in their work. Um, I know that this is pro probably common knowledge, and um, but I, we do want to mention that, of course, just as with any other journal, we do ask you not to submit any works for consideration to our journal that are already published elsewhere or are being considered for publication. So just wanted to make sure we mentioned that. Um, now, the word preprint has been mentioned several times, so I want to explain what that means. Um, the most important piece here is that you will retain the copyright of your work. Uh, which also means that you are able to submit this scholarly work to other sources for consideration, even after it has been printed in JLDL. Um, if the subsequent publisher requires it, um, you we can remove the, your work from the publication in JLDL, granted, if, if this is necessary. Now, a couple of technical things I want to mention are, uh, first of all, uh, we do ask that you um, complete a non-exclusive distribution and preservation license um, before you publish with us. Essentially, what, what that means is um, you will, um, it, it just says that we can copy and distribute your work and maybe change it to different formats, but you still retain the copyright. That's essentially what that says. And, um, if you do choose to submit your work to another scholarly publication, we do ask that you actually inform that journal that you have a preprint article uh, with JLDL so that they, they're aware. Okay, so who should publish is our next um, topic that I wanted to discuss. Yes, we primarily um, are looking to um, solicit publications from uh, University of Illinois, either masters or doctoral students and alumni who have completed courses in CG Scholar or those current students who are currently enrolled in uh, CG Scholar courses. However, we are also um, going to consider other emerging scholars interested in sharing research in the discipline. Essentially, that means everybody else. Um, so um, multiple authors, of course, can submit publications for consideration. There is no limit to how many manuscripts you can submit. However, we will consider one at a time. So we're not going to publish, you know, uh, several articles by the same author in the same issue, but however, of course, you, you're more than welcome and are encouraged to submit multiple manuscripts. Um, how often do we publish? Um, when do we accept submissions? I know I already mentioned that we plan to publish three to four times a year at this time. This could change, but this is our plan as of, the, as of right now. Um, and we are um, accepting submissions on an ongoing basis. So at any time you're ready to submit, please engage with us and we'd be happy to um, look at your manuscript. Now, what are the benefits of publishing with JLDL? Of course, most important piece is here to be in part of the learning community. Um, that cannot be overemphasized, I would say. And of course, what it also allows you to do, which I'm sure every student will appreciate because we're very busy with our work and studies. Uh, so you can already leverage the work, existing work that you have completed as part of your program. Um, as long as you, of course, align it with the JLDA standards and submission re requirements, but that gives you that opportunity to publish the works that you have already worked on and are essentially, you know, almost ready or even ready for publication. Um, also, especially for those students who have not had a chance to do so, um, this gives you an opportunity to engage in the submission review, revision, and publication process. It is unique, so if you haven't uh, really experienced that, this is a great opportunity to do this. And um, of course, um, your work will be disseminated um, not only in ideals, but also via the award-winning CG Scholar online platform. We already mentioned this before. And uh, as you know, those of you who have experienced it and worked with it know that it um, accommodates multimodal works very well. So that's the, one of the benefits of CG Scholar in addition to the peer review process. And last but not least is open access. Um, I also mentioned that. Um, but just 
to emphasize this um, really gives an opportunity for your work to be accessible by essentially anyone. So it gives you much greater visibility than uh, those journals who um, do not have open access publications. So you only have access if somebody pays for the journal. So I think that's also a great benefit to uh, what we have. And with that, I will give the floor to back to Aurora so she can actually show you some of our, uh, our first issue, right? Thank yes. you. Thank you very much, Natalia. All those points are really important and they come together with our very first issue that we were able to put on the website today. So, hooray. Uh, thank you so much for everybody that was able to, to work on it, that worked so hard so that it happened today. As you can see here, that some of our committee members were very creative and were able to get a very beautiful logo and a cover page so there it is uh, for the Journal of Learning Design and Leadership with our volume one, issue one. And I will show you the, the details of it, but here is a quick overview of the articles that we have. And as you can see here, it really touches upon various aspects of education. We have constructivism, we have assessment, we have about reading, we have about professional development, and we have about health profession um, and specifically clinical supervision of it, right? So here is the full issue all gathered into uh, obviously one PDF and the, the logo, the first page, cover page, etc., are the same. We have the acknowledgement. What I wanted to show you here quickly was just the table of content so that you have an idea of um, how it's organized. Of course, we have acknowledgement not from the editors, meaning Natalia and myself, and a page on the aim and scope of the journal. But what Natalia mentioned earlier was that division between foundational scholarly work and advanced scholarly work. And you will definitely uh, see a little difference when you read the articles, um, but here constructivism and assessment are within uh, foundational scholarly works, and the advanced works are um, the three remaining one about reading, uh, online professional development, and health profession. Uh, and they are a lot more extensive, as you noticed, right? Um, Natalia mentioned that the word count is also one of the difference. Two to four thousand, uh, two to, yes, two to four thousand for foundational and five to eight for advanced. So there is a lot more um, mm. into those articles generally. Uh, so you can really decide into which one you want to go. As Natalia mentioned, it's really a great way to have all the hard work that you did in the LDL courses put together into a great article that can be there for publication. So that's really something that is uh, exciting. And that's, um, so that's our beautiful uh, PDF right there with everything on it. So you can see here, it's pretty extensive, right? We have uh, well over a hundred pages. And probably what you are all wondering is how do I submit? What do I need to do? How is that gonna work? So I'm gonna go into the submission guideline page and I'm gonna be able to share this page and have Natalia quickly go over some of the points that I think you guys uh, would like to know about the journal submission process. Thank you. Okay, so you see that there's obviously a lot of information on the page. Um, I don't want to, don't let it scare you. We'll only go over the basics right now. And if you're, you know, you're interested in submitting, you can go over this and kind of look at every tab here in detail. So all the instructions are there. I'll just highlight some of the things that maybe are important for you to know at this time. So you, we already mentioned uh, that we are publishing through CG Scholar and through Ideals. And for that reason, we do ask that the submission is made in two different formats. I know it may sound daunting, but it's actually not as difficult. Um, so we do ask you to submit your manuscript in Scholar, of course, and um, also attach your word um, uh, manuscript in the word format as well. So, um, but is that there's no other difference, no extra work uh, required there. So that's one thing that may be different from other journals. Um, also, um, we 
again, as mentioned before, encourage a multimodal approach. Uh, so we do encourage the authors to embed uh, different types of media, such as data sets, infographics, and videos. However, with that comes some maybe additional formatting that's required. So we do ask that um, the, all the media is cited using um, APA, 7th edition formatting style, and the same applies to the rest of the work as well. Uh, and we also ask that you articulate and explain the relevance of the media uh, in your um, in the body of your work. So you explain why it is relevant, why you include it, and so on. Um, we also have a rubric available on the page. I think it's a little bit above. Yes, I believe so. Uh, we're not going to go over this one right now. But again, if you're considering uh, a submission to JLDL, we strongly recommend that you actually review it prior to submitting it. It gives you a very good guideline. Uh, like guidelines as to what we look at when we review uh, manuscripts for publication. So this is the rubric that we use um, to review the works. And also, uh, I don't know if I wanted to mention that uh, too, that we will be inviting our um, uh, authors who publish in our journal to peer review as well. And those of you who are interested, um, for, for those of you who are interested, it could be a great opportunity to engage in the peer review process. It also is a very, um, how should I put it? It's, it? it's a it's a great learning process, I think. Um, I have done peer reviews for other journals as well, and I think I learned a lot there. So I think that would be a great opportunity for the authors as well. Um, other details um, that we wanted to mention is that uh, we ask, uh, especially this relates to literature reviews uh, in particular, well, we ask that the works include at least 15 scholarly uh, sources. By scholarly, mean, uh, from, we mean from peer-reviewed journals. Um, that does not include white papers or non-scholarly magazines or websites. And we also ask that at least five of those sources um, were published um, within the last five years, meaning that they are actually very recent. So those are some of the things that we ask for you to consider before you submit. Um, organizing and drafting work, I'm not going to go into this. It's quite a bit of detail. It talks about writing conventions, use of media. So a lot of detail is provided here. So please use these guidelines. Um, this essentially kind of summarizes what I wanted to say, but before I give, uh, um, I let Aurora conclude our presentation. I do want to one more time say thank you to the incredible group of people who have made this possible. Uh, special thanks, of course, go to um, Cara Francis who have moved us along and made this all possible. And there's a, I can't mention everybody who was involved, but it's an amazing group of people. I'm privileged to work with you all. So thank you very much, Aurora, please go ahead. I'll let you finish. All right, so I'm gonna take us all home. We are going to uh, conclude quickly and I have no better words than what Natalia just mentioned. So there is a lot of information on this page. So the link has been put in the chat. Thank you, Cara, for putting the link. So feel free to go back to the website and uh, spend some time going over the instruction, going over all those details that are really put here on the website to help you write something that will be accepted right away and that you will not have to do so much review, right? Because when you spend a lot of time writing a great article, you will have to do some kind of review or some kind of adjustment, but you want to get it as good as possible right away. So really take the time to go over that there's a lot of things that you guys can also download, like a word submission template uh, and details. So make sure you go and check all those links and all those details. In the submission guidelines tab, you can find submission instructions and you can also learn more about the review and the publication process. So really feel free to dig into that. Uh, take the time to really see how things are organized and how we're making sure that uh, those articles that you submit are peer reviewed and that they are the best quality possible uh, for the journal. So make sure you take some time before you submit so that you have all the chances on your side. And I will be uh, concluding by reiterating what uh, Natalia mentioned that not only it is a great experience to submit to a journal uh, to be peer reviewed, to have an opportunity to have your work displayed to the entire academic community and to other uh, stakeholders. But also, you could be part of the process. You could be a reviewer. 
just like Natalia mentioned, if your work is accepted and is finally published, then you will have the opportunity to also become a reviewer. Just like Natalia, I submitted some of my articles to academic journal, I got approved, and then later I've been contacted to be a reviewer. So it's a really great process to learn. Um, and also, you can be part of some of our committees. And here are uh, the three committees that we uh, that we have: the editorial committee, operations committee, and communication committee. So you could be part of our great team, just like Natalia mentioned. Um, for editorial, so that will be uh, Natalia, myself, but also we have Julia, uh, Laurie that is uh, in attendance today, I believe. Hi, Laurie. Uh, Josh and Austin. So really more in terms of the peer review process, uh, reviewing the works, uh, things like that. Uh, if you are more on the technical side and would like to facilitate the submission and the peer review process, you can support Erin and Chris by being part of the operations committee. So that's, uh, that's also very good if you or more on the technical part of the journal. And the communication committee, uh, we had Nina, I don't want to forget uh, Nina as well, that uh, with Trevor were uh, working on the logo, the communication, uh, maintaining the website, things like that. And of course, we could not conclude without saying a big thank you to Kara for uh, being a great journal advisor and making sure that this first issue would be published today. Uh, we couldn't thank her enough. So this is pretty much all that we have for you tonight for the Journal of Learning Design and Leadership. So make sure that you check out the website that has been put in, um, in the chat. So the link is in the chat and go over the submission guidelines, everything. And we cannot wait to welcome your work, um, review it and make sure that you guys can be published. And if you prefer to be part of the committees and be behind the scene, don't hesitate to contact any of us, um, Natalia, myself, Cara, or anybody else that you already know uh, that is part of the committees, and we will be more than happy to welcome you in our team. So I think that's about all. Uh, if Natalia or Cara or Lori has more to say, please feel free uh, to jump in. Otherwise, I will give the floor back to Travis. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much for the presentation. Um, with that, um, if nobody else from the journal has anything that they would like to chime in about, I would like to open things up for uh, Q&A from, from everybody here. So, so if you have questions about the journal, about the presentation, anything you saw here tonight, uh, go ahead and ask away. Um, while everybody's thinking of questions only because I'm thinking, you know, people might watch this back later and, and potentially have some questions. Um, Natalia, or, or would either of you be able to uh, explain ideals uh, in a little bit more depth for, for everybody, for those who aren't familiar? That's a very good question, Travis. Thank you for that. Uh, does Natalia or Cara wants to jump in? No pressure. Cara, you wanna mention something? Sure. So, sorry, I'm sitting on my porch where it's uh, semi uh, nice weather out here. Um, so, yes, um, Ideals is the University of Illinois repository of all kind of academic um, publications, like dissertations and theses get um, submitted there. But so can the individual articles that um, you guys submit to the journal. So, it's another repository to have visibility into your your research and your publication. So. Um, it, and you can decide how how visible it is. You can say it's only visible within the University of Illinois community, or you can say it's um, available to the to the public. So it's just another great way to get um, visibility into your work. Thank you for explaining that, Kara. Any other questions? I know that the web address has been uh, shown in the chat a, a couple of times um, for those in the, the recording or watching this back, you don't uh, can't see the chat. It was in the uh, HTML address at the top of the page, but it is ldljournal.web.illinois.edu.
if folks have questions uh, that they can't find answers to on the website, is there an email address that they should reach out to or somebody that they should reach out to from the new journal? Yes, absolutely. That's a, that's a very good um, question as well. Um, they can definitely email um, myself, Natalia, or Kara. Kara uh, listed her email address as she's the journal advisor. Uh, she did list her email address, but she's very busy as well. So um, that can be forwarded to Natalia, myself, uh, maybe even uh, Julia, Lori, and uh, anybody else from the editorial committee. And we'll be more than happy to answer those questions. And it is Thank provided you. on the website. So there is the link right there on the website for contact. And Natalia put her um, email address as well in the chat for everybody. Thank you. I'll give everybody another moment or so. Um, while people are thinking of questions, uh, we can, uh, if, you, if folks are interested, uh, maybe a, a show of hands or something like that, um, I can uh, split us off into breakout rooms uh, so everybody could uh, have an opportunity to, to do a little bit of networking in a shorter group. Um, while um, folks are, are thinking about that, I did just want to ask one uh, last uh, question uh, for everybody. Uh, if you could just give us some feedback on uh, the, uh, the event tonight. Uh, I wanna thank everybody who uh, attended. Again, this was recorded um, for everybody uh, who registered and will get sent out uh, roughly 12 hours, I think um, after the uh, event is over. Hi, Travis. I um, had a quick um, idea about a question. Um, so I wonder if uh, the editors or Kara want to speak uh, about um, what, what, what is, why is this a good idea for students to think about um, to, to kind of get, uh, get started with publishing? What, what do you think, uh, why do you think it's a good idea for students? to be thinking about publishing and in the JLDL journal. I could speak to that a little bit and maybe um, other guys could chime in. So again, speaking from my personal experience, um, when uh, you start publishing or try to publish in peer reviewed journals, professional journals, the task could seem daunting at first because the process is very lengthy. Um, you don't always get accepted. Um, there are multiple rounds of revisions that you have to go through a lot of times and it can be initially very discouraging. So having the journals, an opportunity to publish in journals who are, um, I don't want to claim that we're learning journals, but journals who are really understand what kind of audience they're targeting specifically and are willing to work uh, with the uh, with the authors um, for to make sure that the publications that are, are not out of reach, I think that's a great opportunity. So it's a, a kind of a scaffolding mecha mechanism to get to this uh, ultimate, you know, goal of publishing within scholarly journals that may not be as forgiving, for example, as a student graduate journal. So and provides great practice and helps you better understand the process. Um, and essentially, yes, go through this a couple of times until you really understand what the publisher, the publisher is looking for. So that's one aspect that maybe uh, others can add as well. Yes, I completely agree with Natalia. It's definitely helping um, us as graduate students, for instance, to really put together a work that goes even beyond what we do in the course, because the courses are relatively short. There is a lot of information. We have to talk about a lot of things, but when we are passionate about a specific topic or that it's related to what we want to really dig into, that is a great way to really do even more research, to really get out there, spend time researching, writing about it. And once we get to the point of publishing, same thing from a personal experience, having your first article being published, it's like, 
wow, I finally did it. Like all my hours spent on researching and writing, um, it's paying off. You see your work being published, being acknowledged by the academic community and you can continue your research. It's also um, boosting you with more energy to continue your research, to continue publishing in the academic work at a level that is really expect, expected from graduate students and, and future alumni of the program. So uh, I would definitely encourage everybody to do that. Thank you for the great question and the answers. Any last minute questions? It didn't seem like anybody was or really interested in doing any networking. I don't wanna force anybody into that situation, but to just make sure. No, I don't see any other question in the chat either, Travis, but I'm just gonna share verbally what Kara just wrote in the chat uh, for everybody that uh, will be watching this uh, later. Uh, Kara mentioned and points out that uh, we have a very detailed submission guidelines. That's why it took us about six to nine months to be where we are today. Uh, we had to think about everything regarding the journal and the submission process, the guidelines, the instructions, the peer review process. So it's very uh, much written in detail on the website and uh, it's meant to encourage this elevated attention to the academic writing expectations uh, beyond what uh, might be submitted for class. So that was the point that Kara was making and uh, definitely. And it also helped practice that uh, APA 7th edition there. So that's a good thing too. Thank you. Yes, by the style guide, Kara says. Very useful. Well, with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and end things this evening. I want to thank everybody again for coming to learn about the JLDL. Uh, thank you to the co-editors co and sharing about the journal. Congratulations again on the first issue. Um, and as they said, you can check out their website to learn more. If you have other questions about online programs or anything like that, you can reach out to our office. Uh, you can always reach out to me directly at tgiffen at illinois.edu. Thank you uh, all for joining us this evening. Uh, the recording will be sent out afterwards along with a short survey for feedback on the event. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you very much, Travis, for this opportunity. And thank you, everyone, for attending. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much both for coming. Take care.